Blessed art thou, Jehovah God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In Jehoshua's name, we come before you, O Jehovah, even in these last days, as the children of Israel, Most High, give it testimony that you are righteous, that you are just, that you are merciful, O Most High. And we come here even as the descendants of even our ancestors who were slaughtered in this place, asking and begging for righteous judgment upon Babylon. In 1863, man, we thought that we were free. Fighting the war, we know what it was to hit the street, so we spread the rumors. We told all our families, we gathered the old folks and the children and hit them leaves. We were walking and running, cause they said that we'll be free. Just go down in this hole and if you make it, then you will be up north with the free folks. We you chill in your east folks. I didn't know where it was, but somehow I did sit some east But that's the one with these heathens. We know where it could have been. We know if we made it up out this hole, where it should have been. So we took to the streets. You know the rumors spread it real fast. We told all the Hebrews, you know we made them happy. From mama to grandma, everybody in this hole, at least the amount that we can get to go. And it's 20,000. Man, this hit out of control. It's been six months. How the hell we get this devil's punch? Oh. Good night, Obo Pop. And hold themselves not guilty. They hold themselves innocent, even as they shed the blood of our, of our sons, of our daughters, of our elders, fathers, of the young and of the old, of the weak and of the strong, almost how they have shown no pity, they have shown no mercy. The slaves were released from the plantations no, no and the occupation. They overran matches, and the population went from about democracy to be free. Natchez we feel the same, they slaughtered and murdered us, we wish we were still enslaved, they'd rather be picking cotton than rotting their life away, invested with smallpox, corruption would never stop, while working around the clock, they buried you where you drop, you planted us like we crops, and hope that we never sprout, but Yah has a final plan, deliver us from this land, he never intended for us to be destroyed by the hands of man, kidnap our souls, kidnap our soul. the devil punch bowl, devil punch bowl. still in under FEMA's control, FEMA's control. Rex 84, Rex 84. The king got for plain. These crackers are plotting. I hope y'all Hebrews are praying. Begging for mercy, screaming for grace. Preparing your soul for what you destined to face. In the face. 13 elites, the mark of the beast. I'm spiritually conscious, giving our praises to thee. Most high. Even the blood of the saints who was slaughtered, even by the whore of Babylon as she becomes drunk. Off of the blood of our people, O oh, Jehovah, have mercy on us. Even gather the remnant of Judah and of Israel together in spirit and in truth. Remove even the divisions, O oh, Most High God, that keep us from coming together. And let us come together in love and forgiveness and unity, Most High, and in faithfulness and in obedience and submission in spirit and in truth. We just pray on behalf of our people, Yisrael, O oh, Most High, that you have caused us to stand in these last days. Give us strength, O oh, Yehovah, for the Ruach HaKodesh upon us, O oh, Pour out the latter rain, O oh, Most High. Show mercy unto us. Deliver us, O oh, Yehovah. Open the gates of heaven unto our prayer. Yehoshua, receive our prayer. Oh, yeah, receive our prayer. Heavenly Father, let our prayer be as of, 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 of sweet incense before the altar of thy throne, O oh, God. Remember us. Remember the covenant that you made with our forefathers. We repent. Forgive us, oh Yah. We have transgressed. We have dealt iniquitously. Our, our men and our women and our sons and our daughters, we are all guilty. But we repent with the whole heart. Forgive us, Yahweh. Deliver us, Yahweh. Pardon our transgressions. Salak Banu. Forgive us, oh Yah. Deliver us from this bondage, oh Yah. From, from this evil, from this pain. From the suppression, from 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 no, no, from all this terror, day and night, oh Yahweh, hear us, oh Yah, deliver us, oh Heavenly no, Father, Yahushua, forgive us, but we have slaughtered you, and we turned you over to the enemy, and we hope that we serve you in spirit and in truth, and that our sacrifices and our bondage and our oppression is is is, is compensation for yours, oh Yah. Have waited for us longer than we have waited for you. So have mercy on us, O Most High God. Pause. 
the house of Judah to stand. Cause the house of Israel to stand, O Most High God. And as we stand, bring down the adversary. For Jacob means the supplanter, O Yehoshua. So to supplant and grab the heel of Esau, we must be on the ground, and we are on the ground. Now, help us stand up, and as we stand up, let us take the heel of this oppressor and slam him into the ground, Most High God, and let him go into the pit. Let him go into the devil's punch bowl. Let him go there, Most High God. Bring righteous judgment on your host world. Come here even as the descendants of even our ancestors who were slaughtered in this place, asking and begging for righteous judgment upon Babylon. In 1863, man, we thought that we was free. Fighting the war, we know what it was to hit the street, so we spread the rumors. We told all our families, we gathered the older folks and the children and hit them leaves. We were walking and running, cause they said that we'll be free. Just go down in this hole and if you make it, then you will be up north with them free folks. We you chilling, your east folks. I didn't know where it was, but somehow I did say some east But that's the one with these heathens. We know where it could have been. We know if we made it up out this hole, where it should have been. So we took to the streets. You know the rumors spread it real fast. We told all the Hebrews, you know we made them happy. But mama to grandma, everybody in this hole. At least the amount that we can get to go. And that's 20,000. Man, this shit out of control. It's been six months. How the hell we get this devil's punch? Oh. Good night, almost high. And hold themselves not guilty. They hold themselves innocent. Even as they shed the blood of our of our sons, of our daughters, of our elders, fathers, of the young and of the old, of the weak and of the strong, almost how they have shown no pity, they have shown no mercy. When slaves were released from the plantation no, no and the occupation, they overran batches, and the population went from about... Democracy said we're free, the Natchez did feel the same, they slaughtered and murdered us, we wish we were still the slave, they rather be picking cotton than rotting their life away. Infested with smallpox, corruption would never stop. While working around the clock, they buried you where you drop. Your planet us like we cross and hope that we never sprout. But Yah has a final plan, deliver us from this land. He never intended for us to be destroyed by the hands of man. Kidnapped our soul, the devil punch bowl. Still in existence, under FEMA's control. We just, we just pray, pray on behalf on of our people, people Yisrael, 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 Yisrael almost high, high, that you have caused us to stand in these last days. Give us strength for your hope. Pour the rock of oh, oh, death upon us, O oh, Yah. Pour out the latter rain, O oh, most high. Show mercy unto us. Deliver us, O oh, Yahweh. Open the gates of heaven unto our prayer. Your hope to receive our prayer. Oh, yeah, receive our prayer. Everybody's just standing still. Is it frozen? Oh, Am I froze? Am I froze? I'm like surprised. I think it's good now. God. Shalom, shalom. Shabbat shalom, family. Okay, shabbat shalom. Man, can y'all hear me? Okay. Yeah, I'm going to just leave it like this then, since I'm glitching. Yeah. I'll leave it like this and the scriptures will be on the screen, right? Is the sound glitching? Is the audio glitching? That sounds fine to me. It sounds good. Okay. Shabbat Shalom, brothers and sisters. It's a blessing to be here on the Shabbat today. All praise to the Most High. There we go. 
that he has kept us, preserved us, and our families and our loved ones. I'm so glad that the Most High has kept you who are watching and have protected you and your families. We're living in some times right now that are like treacherous days. We're in the last days, um, and we're seeing um, this war that is going on between the pure bloods and those with the snake venom. Stop. For those who are in the know, you know, you should know what the snake venom represents. Things that we can't say, of course, online, and we can't say um, on social media because, you know, they go crazy. The algorithms don't like this particular word. But we're seeing Jamie Foxx being um, uh, diagnosed with brain aneurysms, a stroke, and partial blindness, all after he was bitten with the snake bite. And aside from this, we have the wife or, or girlfriend and, 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 and baby's mother of, of DC Youngfly, a comedian on the show Wildin' Out. Is he on, on anything else other than Wildin' Out? He they have a podcast. He has his own podcast. And now and, a couple his movies. Wife, and he made food films. He makes music too. Oh, yeah. Seriously, his wife dies while getting what they call a mommy makeover. A mommy makeover. Um, and these things are no coincidence. We we know that there are people dying from the snake bite, and we know that in the music and the entertainment industry, just like Kanye West said, you have those who make sacrifices for fame. And in order to get this, this, this fame that they, they so desire, they usually have to write off somebody that they love or someone that's close to them. And so is it any coincidence that every famous rapper has somebody, their best friend die mysteriously or their, their beloved family member or somebody close to them that they've known all their life or someone very significant to them perishes? So we're going to talk about all of these things today because, you know, there was a time when this thing was exposed last year for what it for what it really was. We had a man come out publicly in the media and repenting for what he his part in the death of his own mother, who died in the same way that Jackie O died. Kanye West's mother died while getting plastic surgery, what they call a mommy makeover. And he confessed that her death was not really a coincidence, even though it was made to look like a coincidence on the news and in, in, in the media, on TMZ and um, all those other entertainment um, news reporting um, stations, they all reported it as just an accidental death. But we know, those of us who have discernment know that it's much greater than just that. So we're gonna talk about these things because the Most High predicted all of these things in the scriptures through his son, Yehoshua Mashiach and the prophets and the apostles, and these things can be found in the holy text. So we're going to talk about these things. We're going to show you video footage of how, can we say the word, A-I-D-S? -A mm, I don't know. How the, the disease, A-I-D-S, was created, and then mercenaries were hired to inject hundreds of thousands of people in Africa to spread this disease back in the 80s. These things were done by injection. We're going to talk about how the deathbed confession of the killer of Bob Marley and how the U.S. government was afraid of the impact of Bob Marley's music and they stuck uh, a needle in Bob Marley's shoe. It was given to him as a gift and then they poisoned the needle. They put a snake bite in the needle to kill uh, our beloved singer, Bob Marley. So all of these things are happening and they're coming out. And now um, people who get the snake bite, which we told all of our, our, our listeners and our followers when the snake bite was being distributed, not to do these things, that these things were against the law, statutes, and commandments, that what the ingredients that are in the snake bite are unclean ingredients. Let me see if I can change it and hopefully I, I still won't be glitching. Let me change it real quick. Quick, y'all let me know. Bear with us for one quick second. 
Okay. Um, let me see if it switches. Yeah, uh, we told our listeners and our followers. Are we are we good? No. No, it looks like we live. Okay. Yeah, you can hear me? All right. We told our listeners and followers and most responsible elders and teachers throughout the, the, the nation of Israel, we told the body of Yehoshua HaMashiach to avoid the snake bite because it would it do what? It would change your DNA. It will change your RNA. It will create spike protein, with which it, it kind of forms like thorns almost. You know, there's wheat and there's tears, and thorns represent unclean spirits and demons. And it's like it creates thorns within the bloodstream and within the heart, clogging people's um, um, arteries. And so it gets worse um, when people do exercise. So if you're healthy and fit, it's even worse. Because as you're exercising and that blood circulates and that venom is inside the system, it goes to the heart. And it lodges there and it clogs your arteries and it creates strokes, it creates um, heart attacks. Most times when people get a heart attack, then it eventually leads to what? Stroke. Mm -hmm. So when you have uh, a heart attack in your chest, there's a ripple effect that sometimes goes up to the brain and a, a stroke is kind of like a heart attack in the head, right? Causing the blood not to be able to flow throughout uh, the brain properly, and then strokes uh, come after that, where the person usually has a hard time moving their, their extremities. So all of these things are happening because people did not obey the Most High Yah, and they took that snake bite. So we're going to talk about these things, and we're going to pray for healing over Yah's people, that this venom that's in their system can be alleviated, we're going to read in the book of Jubilees also how the herbs were given to Noah by the Most High Yah, how Noah wrote all of the herbs in a book for our healing and how the pharmaceutical companies don't want us to have the knowledge of the herbs. Because when we understand what Yah created for our healing, why would we, why would we rely on overpriced uh, uh, med medicines? with really severe side effects in order to be healed. So we're gonna read these scripts, we're gonna talk about these things, and we're gonna play these videos for your edification and for the glory of the Most High. Y'all ready? Amen. Hallelujah. You ready to say this prayer, Bain? Toda Yehoah Eloheinu. Toda Yehoah Elohei Elohe Abotainu. God of our fathers. Abraham. Abraham. Yitzchak. Isaac. Yaakov. And Jacob. Ashir uh, Yaklif uh, Shemo Le Yisrael. Um, you which uh, say Yaklif? Mm hmm. Kala, to change, to exchange. You, you repeat the. Uh, mm hmm. Ashir Yaklif Shemo Le Yisrael. You which change the name to Israel. Mm hmm. You change his name from Jacob to Yisrael. Dang, Katafta, Kodivarim, the Sephirka. You wrote all things in your book. Dang, Hasof, the end. Min Hareshit, from the beginning. What ain't Elohe Kamoka? There's no Elohim but you. Dang, Toda Yehovah. Thank you, Yehovah. La Kayenu, our Edha Shabbat, Hazot. For our life from the Shabbat. Shema to Filatenu. Hear our prayer. With Tain Lanu, Ahe, Ohev Kabakisha. And give us your love. Rakameka. With grace. With cold uh, devarim tovin. And all good things. Salaklanu ko tatainu. Give us of all of our sins. With pitov shemotenu. And write our name. Tain, but sefir ha kabetz. In the Lamb's book. Hallelujah. Torah Yehoah. Thank you, Yehoah. Ki barata ha esev. Because you created the uh, SF, mm -hmm. the herbs, the herbs, mm -hmm. uh, le, le, um, le, le potenu, le faenu, sliga, to heal us, Cain, Toda, thank you, he ata profenu, because you are a doctor, what ata yako, and you can, uh, 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 uh near panu, le co de varin, 
you can heal us of all things. Cain. Talam Danu al Edha Yom Haze. And teach us on this very day. Mm -hmm. Call daughter Keika. All of your ways. Lahabdil Otanu. To understand. Mm, to separate. Or to separate. Mm -hmm. Otanu. Us. Men ha going. From the death from the heathen. Ha Bene Yisrael. The sons of Israel. Men are Kol Oivenu. From all of our enemies. Tibarek Hakita Hazo. And bless this class. Retain Lanu. And give us. Kakma. Wisdom. Da'a. Knowledge. Ubina. And understanding. Yom Yom. Anak nu modim lakala kodeveli. And we thank you for all things. Vashem Bainka. And your son. Uh, Yehoshua Hamashiach. In the name of your son, Yehoshua Hamashiach. Haholika. You only begotten. Cain. Vashem Yehoshua. Hallelujah. Vashem Yehoshua. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom family. We are so excited that you have joined us for this Shabbat day. And we just want to take some time to remind you, as you will see scrolling at the bottom of your screen, you can support the ministry one of three ways. Dollar sign, Kayashua, Dale, Kayashua at gmail.com, as well as on our website, www.kayashua.com. Select tithes and offerings and click the yellow donate button. If you can also remember after your Shabbat is over, visit HebrewIsWifeScriptures.com for all of your biblical reading needs as well as Hebraic um, items. We're just really excited at the growth of the library and we uh, encourage you all to stop by, visit, add those things which we do not have already. And let's see who we have okay. in the chat. Okay. All right, Shabbat Shalom to Sister Natasha, Shabbat Shalom to the Hood family. Hood family in the house, Shabbat Shalom. And of course, Shabbat Shalom to our host, Elder Zohar in Eliana. We are so grateful to Hallelujah. be here. Hallelujah. Amen. Shabbat Shalom, there in Israel. Shabbat Shalom, Anyale. Shabbat Shalom. Jason Philip McCauley, Shalom, Mr. The Original School, Don P. Yehuda, Shalom, Shalom, to, uh-oh, and Nukia, okay. Shalom, 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 uh, Shabbat Shalom, to Serapia, Shabbat Shalom, Redmond Grassfield, if you're still on, we are Eastern Standard Time, Shalom, Shalom, Billy Ray, Shalom to Sister Nak Nakia. It's good to see you. Shabbat Shalom to Sister Jamila. Shalom to our Kaishua East family. Uh, Moray Shadik. Sister Anna moving on faith. Shalom to Sister Stephanie. Shalom to Bray Howard. Lance White. Shabbat Shalom. Dorothy Temple. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, Akshual. Shabbat Shalom, the one Israel, Ima Bithia, and her sister Marcia Hamilton. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Sister Kiki, good to see you. Dang. Shalom, Angel Walters. Shalom to JC. Shabbat Shalom, Harbinger, Harbinger 2022. Shabbat Shalom, Brother Adiria. Dang. Shabbat Shalom to Asaph Ben Yehuda. Sister Cheryl, Shabbat Shalom. Shalom to Eliezer Cornelius and Alyosha. Shalom to Lucky. Shalom to Shabbat Shalom. For Jedi, the Lexus second in the house. Dang. Shalom, Brother Kenya. Shalom, Gregory. Shalom, let's see. Parasha. Shalom, Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom to Sir Lewis and family. Hey, my brother. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom to Joshua. Shabbat Shalom, Ahava Walters. Shabbat Shalom, Israel's cow. Shalom, sis. Shabbat Shalom, uh, Shabbat Shalom, Ima Sabaya. Shabbat Shalom to Boaz. Shabbat Shalom to T. Ari. Shabbat Shalom to Ashayahu Lemuel. Shabbat Shalom, Josephine. Shabbat Shalom, Brother Edwin. Shabbat Shalom to A. Kavel Williams. 
And Shabbat Shalom to James Milton Cohn. Shabbat Shalom to Gadelia and Lisa. Shabbat Shalom to Ema Kanani. And we are thankful to all of our Kaiyua family that has supported us, continue to support us. Dang. Shabbat Shalom to Brother Awakihu and his family. Dang. We're just really excited. <laughs> <laughs> We are excited and family. If you all are in Texas, we will be uh, in Houston for next Shabbat. So please uh, remember to, uh, if you have any questions, if you're in that area, send us an email at kayashua at gmail.com and we will get that information to you. We are so excited um, to see our family out there. Okay. All right. Hallelujah. All right. Snake venom versus the pure bloods. We got a comment just now from Harbinger 2022, which said 600 million. Let me put it on the screen. 600 million people deleted worldwide. Is that a true statistic? If so, that is staggering. Since this snake snake bite has been released to the public, right? So now there are people even with money who can't buy their health back, who took these things and it actually destroyed them. We had the football player uh, who had the heart attack on the field. You had soccer players around the world passing out during their games and all of it, they have no idea. They, they can't give any conclusive evidence why these people are falling away. But also, we have the death of Jackie O, the uh, the wilding out um, um, model and wife of DC Youngfly, died this week during the midst of a makeover surgery, which we hate for these things to happen to our people. But these are the times that we're living in where people are so ruthless that the love of money has made them cold. The desire for fame has eroded the love that actually exists in the world. So what we're gonna do first, let's play a clip showing what happened to Jamie Foxx. And we're gonna read, no, matter of fact, let's read the scripture first. Let's go, let's start with the word. Let's go to Deuteronomy, De, uh, Deuteronomy, Deborine 32. And we're gonna start at verse 28. I'm gonna pull that up on the screen. Give me one second. So that's our claim uh, for the scripture. Oh, no. oh no, you want to go to Okay. Deuteronomy 32 and 28. Mm. Oh, yeah. Amen. For they, they are a nation void of counsel. Neither is there any understanding in them. Who do you think the Most High is talking about? All right, so these scriptures were written in the beginning in the first five books of Moses, but believe it or not, a lot of these scriptures were written for the last days, for the end time. So mm. this is the last activity of the seven um, that the children of Israel would be in. All right, so he's saying that the children of Israel would be within a nation that is void of understanding and without any true counsel, godly counsel. Go ahead, brother. Okay, verse 29. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. These verse 30. Do all kinds of evil within the government and within the system. And to their mind, they get away with it. We're going to show you the deathbed confession of a CIA operative who killed, who murdered Bob Marley, who befriended Bob Marley and then killed him. <laughs> And they think at the last end that because they're on their deathbed and now they're telling the truth that there's going to be no judgment for them. It's not the way this thing works. They should consider their latter end before they do the great evil that they do. Go ahead, brother. Okay. Verse 30. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousands to flight except their rock had sold them? And Yehoah had shut them up. How could our heathen, how could the heathen put our people in such bondage and fear 
unless it was the Most High Yah who allowed it to happen. So when we are obedient to the law, statutes, and commandments, and we keep the word and the faith of Yehoshua HaMashiach, we have the power, like Samson, for what one man can take the jawbone of a donkey and kill a thousand people at one time. He didn't have no Gatorade. He didn't have no uh, protein powder. He didn't have none of the stuff that we use today. And he cleaved his hand cleaved to that jawbone of an ass, and he slew a thousand men with it because the spirit of the Most High was upon him. Right? How do you say locks in Hebrew? They should look kind of locks, right? You got locks in your hair? Mm -hmm. Kabel? Kabel means to twist, right? So that's one way. To cable. That's right, Kabel. To twist. Let me pull it up on the screen for our brothers and sisters. Um, we talked about that earlier this week, didn't we? All right. So what we're gonna go, we're gonna go to Hebrew. Het, het, bait, lamed, kaval, king, H2254, pronounce kaval. And if we go down to H2256, it's the same word, just has different vowels, hevel. Read that, brother. H2256, a rope as twisted, especially a measuring line, by implication a, dis, uh, dis, a district or inheritance as measured or a noose of uh, as of cords, figuratively a company as if tied together, also a throw. Mm -hmm. To be tied together, to be bound together, and this is where... As Elder Zohar brought out earlier, this is where we get the English word cable, mm. which is a cord that's twisted. All right, so let's go up further. Read H2254 to wind tightly. Go ahead. Okay. To wind tightly as a rope, to bind specifically by a pledge, figuratively by to promote. So you make an oath or, um, with your hair as a Nazarite to lock it, to bind it. Mm -hmm. uh, figuratively to pervert, destroy, also to what is that writhe in pain, especially of patur, uh, So we Park, see two parturition. opposite meanings, right? One to bind and to pledge, like an oath, and then another one which means to destroy. So one definition is within Yehoshua HaMashiach and the others when you take him away. So if you're obedient to Yah, then it's positive. It's an oath. But if you're disobedient to Yah, what happened to Samson when he was disobedient to that pledge? It's all right. He was destroyed. He wreathed in pain. But then he repented and then he came back. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Able to hear that? No, not really. They couldn't hear you. You might have to sit at the table over here. Okay. All right. Yeah. Elder said that in Hebrew, we have positive and negative definitions of a word, like water. Water can be used to drink and to give life, but water in a negative sense can drown you. Mm -hmm. So when we understand, um, you know, the Hebrew language, as we read, we get so much more um, understanding out of it. I want to show you another word for locks, which is uh, kutsot. Uh, uh, 
or like a thorn. Quote, while wow, that. Is it typing? All right, give me one second. It doesn't seem to be typing. Okay, poof, wow, about that. Okay. Okay, we got poofs, which means like a thorn. But if we look at locks, locks, there's another word for locks that comes out of that as well. So, or kutsa. Can you read that up? Jane, feminine passive participle of, I can't see that, uh, in its original okay. sense. 6972, that's how you say lock or to be shorn like locks on your hair, okay? There, it's from the word uh, H69672, which means summer harvest, but it also comes from the word um, like thorn. So your locks are like antennas. Okay, that can draw in power from the sun. Okay, it's supposed to draw in, uh, what's the word, frequency into the head or frequencies from the mind's eye out that extend out of the locks. So either drawing in or extending out from the mind's eye throughout the thorns of the head, like, a, 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 like the rays of the sun. If your head is the shape of, of the sun, then the sun has rays that, that come forth out of it, right? You want to say something? You know what I'm saying? Else? So we look at that, that coops. Mm -hmm. We look at that, um, that coop. That first word in it, the line is up. Mm -hmm. The coop. Yeah. The next word, that was obviously the wa, the connect. And then the righteousness. Right. So that's sabi. So this coop, I'm, I'm highlighting what you said. You say, so poof yeah. represents, say that one more time. It's the rising up. Rising up. Poof means to rise. Like when they say poom, that means to right, rise. Right, mm -hmm. I think Yeshua said poom, right? Yes. Yeah. That means to rise up. So the poof represents the rising up. Mm -hmm. And the wow? It's the connection, the connection. Mm -hmm. And then the sadiq, the righteousness. Mm -hmm. So you're rising up, that hair, and you are connecting, and that makes you righteous. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Throw that for sharing that. Excellent. Y'all got that? You heard that? No. no. Okay. Yeah, it's hard to hear. All right. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll write it down and I'll explain it. Okay, so um, read some comments for a quick brief second as I pull this up. Once the sky says make sense, anything without the spirit becomes distinctive. Mm. distinctive. Um, Brother Kenya, he says, 600 million still only a portion of the depopulation plan um, of only 500 million people left on the earth. Mm. The Georgia Guidestones were removed because that plan has been set in order by the elite. Okay. Dang. I'm going to write it. And paleo. Go ahead, you can read. Okay. Um, Sister Cheryl says they know, but just want to admit to it. Ahava Walter shared people I knew that was healthy suddenly died, and they were so healthy and so active, they just suddenly died. Dang. Okay. This is how we say. Uh, this is the root for, uh, I'm going to write it here, poops, poops. Oh, I'm writing it in, in Hebrew again. <laughs> Let me do it this way. Q, U, poops, which means thorn, or it's the root of the word for like locks, like threads. Now, um, this letter here is called Kuf. This is called Wow. 
and this is Zade and Hebrew. All right. Each letter has a particular meaning in Hebrew. So Kuf means to rise. Right? Wow means to be connected to a connection or even a force. And Zade means speak up. Hit the wrong button here. Mm. Dang. And Zade means righteousness. That's righteousness. So when you look at the meaning of a lock, it's to be a, a force uh, or to rise up by a righteous force or a force of righteousness rising up within us or through us. And that extends from the mind's eye out through the locks or it absorbs from the sun or from the ruach through the locks into the mind's eye like it did with Shemshon or Samson. All right? Right. And, uh, and, and our people, the children of Israel, we're the only people who hear actually rises. All the other nations, their hair falls down while our hair rises. So um, they're like uh, antennas that absorb, okay, uh, and can draw in from, 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 from the heavens the, the, the energy of the sun and of life and so forth. So this is what it means when you have locks, okay? Uh, Elder just said the origin of a halo like that around a person was actually derived from an afro. Well, actually they had all afros, so they just had the afros you know, right. it would be round right. around their heads. They they see them a halo, but that roundness when they started to whitewash the image. Right. They still had that halo relief. That was the symbol of being royal. Wow. So this was an afro. So let's call, let's say this colored in portion is the afro. But what, what happened was that when the heathens started to change the images of our people, they started to um, iconic. Uh, uh, what's it called? I iconicalize the images or change the images over. They would try to make the hair lay down, and then this still, this halo would still remain around it, and then that became the symbol for like divinity or a crown. That's what Elder just pointed out. Hallelujah. Thank you for the donation. Um, we want to say to our sister Kiki for uh, the donation and y'all bless you. Also, Sir Lewis, y'all bless you, brother. We appreciate you. And say shalom to, to the family for us. Hallelujah. Can't wait to see you. Okay. So this is what it means when we have locks. Okay. And this is what it means to, um, to rise up and to be connected to righteousness or to rise up by a force in righteousness. All right, so let's go back to the scriptures. Y'all enjoying the study so far? Hey. Hallelujah, let's get to it. All right, <clears throat> so Samson was able to put a thousand to flight because he rose up, or the spirit, the force within him of Yah was able to rise up in righteous judgment against the heathen. So because the heathen have been allowed to get away with so much mischief against uh, even the whole earth and against uh, our people. They think that this is going to be indefinitely. So they wax worse and worse in, in, in their iniquity. Go ahead. Let's read. Let's read the next scripture. Okay. This is Deuteronomy 32 verse uh, 31. For their rock is not as our rock even our enemies themselves being judges. Mm -hmm. Okay, verse 32. For their vine is a vine, is of the vine of Saddam, and Saddam. of the... Saddam. So their vine is like Saddam, which is Sodom. Go ahead. Okay. And of the fields of Amora. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Gall... The Poison. Okay. Gall is poison. 
Let's pull it up here. It's actually, we're going to get to the Hebrew really quickly. We're in Deuteronomy um, 32. Is that 31? Mm -hmm. Verse 32, where it says go. 32, 32, 32. Okay. Ki megefin sedom gafnam. So their vine is like the Sodom. Okay. U mishad, mishad mot amora. That's Gomorrah, amora. Anavemo, which is great. Anav is how you say great. Anve rosh. Great of Anve Roche. Anve is the grapes of Roche, which is uh, spelled differently than Roche on the head, means gall, which means poison. Okay. Told out of Brother Edwin from your super chat donation. Told out of Brian. Yeah, bless you, Brother Edwin. Hallelujah. Okay, let's get to it. Uh, H seventy two nineteen. Roche. Outline of biblical usage. Okay, it's gall, venom, bitter, poisonous. Poisonous, which is like the same word roche for head, because poison usually comes from the head of an enemy, the head of the serpent. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So gall or venom, bitter or poisonous. So the wine of Babylon is poison, is what the Most High is telling us. Let's read that. For their vine is the vine of Sodom. And their and, see, uh, and of the fields of Amorah, their grapes are grapes of gall, their clusters are bitter. Their grapes are filled with poison. So when we read the book of Revelation, chapter 18, and we, and we talk about the wine of the cup of Babylon, it's filled with drunkenness. So the wine of this last captivity is filled with poison, and we have people who are dying from the snake venom of this poison. Let's get the second verse after that, verse 33. Okay. Verse 33. Their wine is the poison of dragons. One more time. Their wine is the poison of dragons. The poison of Satan is in everything they do. And this is a drunken nation. This nation is spiritually drunk. Dang. So, what's an example of their wine? How about comment on every media? social media platform two years ago and telling everybody in the entire world that if they don't take this particular thing, they were going to die. Mm. Dang. That's an example of the wine of Babylon that had the whole world drunk. And so now, according to the st 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 statistics Lika, that was put in the chat, it was 600 million people who passed away from this. That's an example of the poison of dragons within the wine of Babylon. And now one of the latest victims who is well known is Jamie Foxx. A brilliant actor, a funny comedian, a talented musician. He's a triple threat. That's what they call triple threat. Right. He can act. He can make jokes. He can sing and dance and play instruments. He's a quadruple threat. And he was set to play the role of Mike Tyson in a bio flick movie. And now Mike Tyson has is going to have to replace Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx is no longer gonna be able to play the role of Mike Tyson. And Jamie Foxx is fit, he's healthy. He's a healthy young man. He's strong, he played Django. And now and, and Ray Charles. Hmm? And Ray Charles, interestingly and enough. Ray Charles, right. Oh, and now literally, it's blind. funny how like the devil mocks people. Now he's literally going blind. 
Let's read some comments. Oh, praise God. We appreciate that. Thank you. Derek Israel just posted about um, it's an ingredient in, in, in them in the St. Bites called Luciferis. Luciferis, yes. right. Can't make this up. Right. That's right. Luciferis is an ingredient in these things. That's right. I remember looking that up. And it's it comes from obviously from the word Lucifer. And all of these, all of these uh injections of snake venom have it in it. Mm -hmm. Give me one sec. Oh, you got it? Okay. All right. So let's go ahead, let's read that one more time. Okay. This is Deuteronomy 32, verse 33. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. Go ahead. Verse 34. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? Mm -hmm. To me belongs vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time. Because the we weren't able to physically rise up as a whole group and bring judgment against this nation. They think that it's indefinite that their power will remain, but that's because to Yah belongs vengeance. And he appointed a certain amount of times before he was about to bring judgment. And how long was that time? I want to see. 400 years. Okay. So that time, you know, has, has, is, is now upon us. So now we see judgments coming upon this nation. Go ahead, because, uh, Vengeance of Yah is, 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 is on them. Go ahead. Okay. Verse 35. To me belongs vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time. For the day of their calamity is at hand. And the things that shall come upon them make haste. It shall happen quickly. It took a long time to get here. But once it starts, time speeds up. Let's get fair use. you guys let me pull it up. Okay. Warning, federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without authorization of the copyright holder. This infringement of copyright is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody. Amen. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to pull up a video um, on YouTube. Let's get it. Comes to the condition. Jamie Foxx reportedly left partially paralyzed and blind following health scare. But nobody knows how the health scare came upon him. He just up and suddenly start going blind. Does that make sense? For celebrities that are rich and famous and have access to the best doctors and the best medical facilities, right? That doesn't make sense. Hmm? <laughs> oh, right, right, right. They're lying. Some people uh, don't don't want it to be known how severe his injuries are, and they're making up stories that he's actually playing tennis. They're, they're showing a video from a year ago of him playing tennis and posted saying he's playing. They're showing an old video from a year ago and they're putting it up now to pretend like he's healthy so that people don't see through the matrix. For Comedy Hype News, I'm John Abba. A recent update when it comes to the condition of Jamie Foxx has just been revealed by independent journalist AJ Benza, who was a contributor to the New York Daily News. Recently, Benza appeared on Dr. Drew Pinsky's show, Ask Dr. Drew, as a guest, where he broke the news and gave audiences the latest update on Jamie Foxx. As we all know, Foxx has currently been recovering from a medical emergency that occurred back in April. Sources have not been able to identify what exactly the medical complication was, but Jamie's daughter... Nobody can identify what the complication is, right? We live in the information age, right? They have medical complication, but nobody knows what it is. We know what it is. It's, it's the cup of the dragon. It's the, it's the venom of serpents. Corinne Fox has been updating fans via social media. 
The last we've heard was that Jamie is currently undergoing physical rehabilitation at a facility in Chicago. Benz's conversation with Dr. Drew began with the host bringing up the question of certain Hollywood celebrities having to keep up. A Man, what is that a picture of on the wall behind me? It looks like that, um, the actual thing. It looks like the C minus. It looked like a spike protein uh -huh. on the wall behind them. What we'll do this. Let's do this. I'm gonna go to Google really quickly. I'm gonna type in spike protein. All right. Let me. Yeshayahu, can you read that? Shalom, Maki. Well, Yeshayahu, he said, I have a coworker that was an adamant, that was adamant and running to get the snake bite. Within two years, he is currently dealing with irreversible heart damage. Okay, there we go. Show keyboard. Say, read that one more time. He says, I have a co worker that was adamant and running to get the snake bite. Within two years, he is currently dealing with irreversible um, heart damage. Wow. Yeah, that looks just like it, right? That's a spike protein, right? This is a spike protein. Mm -hmm. Can y'all see that? Spy protein. <laughs> this is a spike protein. All right. The new C virus variant. What is the spike protein and why are mutations on it important? So this is how this is how much they mock us. They're saying they don't know how Jamie Foxx got sick like this. But the doctor who's explaining how we got sick got spike protein on the wall behind him. But they don't know what happened to him. <laughs> Make it make sense. That ain't no flower. That ain't no flower. What kind of flower is that? That's a spike protein. That's a television screen. Yeah, that ain't that ain't no flower. That's a flower of death. A certain political was, but Jamie's daughter, Corinne Fox, has been updating fans via social media. The last we've heard was that Jamie is currently undergoing physical rehabilitation at a facility in Chicago. Benz's conversation with Dr. Drew began with the host bringing up the question of certain Hollywood celebrities having to keep up a certain political narrative at all times. Dr. Drew's main... A certain poli political narrative is exactly what we're talking about. Even this show can't explain what that certain thing is, but we all know what it is. Concern is that the health of these celebrities are being kept under wraps, and if you speculate against the narrative, you become vilified. Aside from Fox, Dr. Drew also mentioned NFL star DeMar Hamlin as another celebrity whose health was kept under wraps after a tragic incident. During the interview, AJ Benz... That's the football player who collapsed on the field, right? ...narrative at all times. Dr. Drew's main concern is that the health of these celebrities are being kept under wraps, and if you speculate against the narrative, you become vilified. Aside from Fox, Dr. Drew also mentioned NFL star DeMar Hamlin as a... DeMar Hamlin, right? Okay. Right. That's the one you sent me today? The one yesterday? Okay. Yes, please. So I'm going to play this a celebrity whose health was kept under wraps after a tragic incident. During the interview, A.J. Benza would say that most people in Hollywood identify with liberal politics and that there is a code of silence in Hollywood where they do not talk about the COVID-19 vaccinations. Both Dr. Drew and Benza agreed that COVID-19 tests were mandatory when it came to filming and show business. Benza would tell Dr. Drew that he allegedly lost a few friends who received the injection. One who was in great shape and a black man, he would, of course, connect the situation to Jamie Foxx. I worked my butt off to get a story about why what happened to Jamie Foxx. It was all baloney what they were reporting. He's playing pickleball. He's uh, responding on Instagram. No, he's not. Jamie had a blood clot in his brain after he got the shot. He did not want the shot, but the movie he was on, he was pressured to get it. And I'm thinking, is that why he blew up on the set a week before this medical emergency happened? What I found out from the man in the room was that uh, the blood clot in the brain caused him at that point to be partially paralyzed and blind. 
Because if you read into what they were saying early on, he's communicating with us. That doesn't mean talking. That could be anything. And then when you tell me your father's playing pickleball, give me a break. Even TMZ is not reporting this. And I know TMZ has got sources who give them information, whether it's legal or not. Benza would then tell Dr. Drew that despite the fact that everyone has been speculating on the condition of Jamie Foxx, no one has been able to officially come out and identify what happened. A week after I broke This is why we can't put the love of money before the most high up. So because of a film project that he wanted to get paid for, he succumbed to pressure to take this shot, knowing that these things are, are filled with venom. But because of the love of money is greater than the love of the most high, he will take that shot and then deal with the consequences later. This is why our devotion to the most high, what's the first and greatest commandment? That's right. Love Yehovah thy Elohim with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. So if you don't love him with all your heart, all your soul, all your might, then the love of money can creep in and you'll do anything for a dollar. He's already rich. He's already a multimillionaire. So why would he put his health on the line just to get more money? What else can he buy that he doesn't really already have? other than the pride of life to say, look, I have X amount of dollars and I'm in this social class now, when you're already in the social class of a, a multimillionaire and a movie star. Okay, hallelujah. All right, I'm going to um, finish playing this out. My story on my show, Mike Tyson said, Jamie had a blood clot in his brain. No one's gone that far to say that yet. Benz is referring to Mike Tyson's appearance on the PVD podcast, where they spoke on Fox portraying Tyson in the upcoming biopic. On Jamie's condition, Tyson would say he's not feeling well. They said a stroke. When it came to the secrecy surrounding Fox's condition, Page Six reported that Tyson said, if we don't know about it by now, they don't want us to know. What do you guys think about journalist AJ Benza's latest reveal regarding Jamie Foxx's health condition? Let's talk about it more in the comments below and stay up to date for the latest news and comedy by subscribing here to our YouTube channel and follow Comedy Hype across all social media. Plus, look out for new original content coming to our streaming service at HypePlusTV.com. For Comedy Hype News, I'm John Opp. This is devious, man. This is devious. Let's read that scripture one more time. Let's go Deuteronomy 32 again. Um... Deuteronomy 32, 32. Okay. For their vine is of the vine of Saddam and of the fields of Amora. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Yeah, grapes their are grapes of poison. Poison. Mm. This is their wine. This is their doctrine. This is what they promote. Poison. Go ahead. Okay. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. Mm, their wine is the poison of dragons. That's 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 saying a lot. This is what Moses said. The protein? The venom, uh, Elder Zohar said, when the venom gets in your system, that's what it does to your bloodstream. It creates clusters, which uh, create um, blockages to mm -hmm. the blood. Their wine is the poison of dragons and cruel venom and the cruel venom of ass. Let's see what Yehoshua says about these same people. We're going to go to the book of Matit Yahu, Matthew. Matthew 12, Matit Yahu 12. Matthew 12 and 34. Let's actually, let's start at 32. Okay. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 32. And whosoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaks against the Ruach HaKodesh, it shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Either make the tree good, and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt, and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. America is known by its doings. 
whether it be for good or whether it be for evil. Every nation or every person is known by what they do, not by what they say. So if you want to get to know a person, you don't listen to what they say. You watch what they do. Watch them. You watch what they do and you see the true intent of the heart. Go ahead. Okay. Verse 34. Oh, generation of vipers. What generation? This generation. A generation of vipers poisoning the whole world. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, generation of vipers. How can you, being evil, speak good things? But then they want to tell us What's good and what's righteous? They want to tell us who we should believe and who we should distrust. They persecute the righteous. Mm. And the wicked, they allow liberty to speak. They give them the, the promotion. They give them the microphone. They give them uh, the audience when they're speaking evil things. But they never truly speak anything righteous or good. Mm. Old generation of vipers, read that one more time. This is what your whole said. Old generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? We're concerned our about your health. The World Health Organization, right? The Center for Disease Control, not the Center for uh, Disease um, uh, In what's the word? Remedies? Uh, uh, Cures. Cures, right. Not the Center for Disease Cures. You would think the CDC means Center for Disease Curing, right? No. Center control. for Disease Control. We want to control who gets sick. You know, more uh, it's like, uh, in Atlanta. Where, where, where's Chocolate City, as, as Elder would say. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> so I, as, as I shared with you the other day, I've been watching um, uh, The Walking Dead. Mm hmm. And in that show, um, you know, they have a part where they go to the CDC after everything goes down. Mm -hmm. And the guy in the building, like the last scientist alive, was talking about how they get ready to basically explode the entire place. I said it all on fire. Spoiler alert. Yeah, spoiler alert. But um, he get ready to explode the whole thing and on fire. And they trying to figure out why he's going to do that. He was like, you know that we have diseases here that are going to destroy mankind if they get out of here. So the mm -hmm. only way we can control it is by just destroying it all now with fire. So they have facilities, and that, I know it's a show, but the reality is they have facilities where they keep these diseases. You know, even with the whole COVID thing, it was in a, it was a, 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 a modified virus. Be careful with that word. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 but with the, with the situation, it was a modified situation. Um, and they've had it for years, and they've been, they've been weaponizing it. Right. Because these are the generation of vipers. These are evil people who try to speak good things that they're concerned about the health of the world. And they're giving people all of these things to save their lives and to preserve their health and well-being. So this is what y'all is talking about. Read that again, 34. Okay. Matthew 12, 34. Old generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Go ahead. Okay. Verse 35. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bring forth evil things. They bring forth evil things. So they speak good things, but the fruit of it is something evil. Let's see the origins of all of this. Let's go back to the beginning. So those who have the book of Jubilees, hallelujah, we are in for a treat. We're going to go there and read today. You have something to bring forth? I was going to say something. Can we go real quick to Strong 7161? Strong 7161. Let's go to it. Uh, um, Strong. 87161. Okay. Tell me what I was at. Pulling it up right now. Eight seven one six one. Karen Horn, right? Okay. Well, this is 
that mean? Mm-hmm. What, what word do you think that is? Triangle. Uh-huh. Pyramid. Correct, mm-hmm. right? Correct. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like a drink, an alcohol drink, a beer that we can't say. That's where the word comes from. Really? Yeah, because it has horns, spikes, horns. Mm. When you look at it, it's a circle and it's got horns and it stick it out. Get out of here. It's a when you look at it. Right. The spike that we can't say. Right. Right? That's right. where the word karen comes from. You karen, then add a note to it. That's the root word of it. Mm. They can't hear me, but. Okay. Karen. I'll, I'll demonstrate. It's the root word. Okay. That's like one for language. All right. Keren, right? Keren. Horn, even like rays of light, like horn like projections, projectiles, right? Keren. Right. Keren. But in. All right. Some people pronounce the letter Kuf as a C. So if we were to take the letter C, it would be like this. Keren. All right. Also from the root brown. Okay. Right. Brown. This is where we get uh uh this means horn spike. They're giving you a kind of horn. Like a ray mm-hmm. or a thorn. Yeah. And if you put the letter O at it, you get coreno or You know the rest. So when you break it down in Hebrew, this word means crowns. As for the, you know, the spikes that stick out of a crown. Or kareno mean it has spikes. When you put that suffix O at the end of it, it means it or him. Or Messiah, it's humiliated him with what? A crown of thorns. Thank you. But, uh, but out of box. That's why they did that. Right. They humiliated Yehoshua with a crown of thorns. They hate him. And they hated him. They hate us. <laughs> Corona, it has spikes, it has thorns. Yes, please. Um, Dorothy Temple posted, some of those that got the thing and died could not be embalmed because their arteries were blocked by massive blood clots. What? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Decided to use the word for a crown. Right. A crown of thorns. That's why the that's why the virus is named what it's named because it's named after the thorns which they gave to Yehoshua to kill him. Hallelujah. Bashem Yehoshua. Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of Jubilees. We're gonna go to the Sefer Yovelin. Let me pull that up on the screen, chapter eight. We're going to see how this wickedness came on the earth after Yah cleansed the earth and the world from sin during the flood of Noah. How did all of this wickedness come back? It was a generation of vipers, a generation of, of evildoers. All right, so we're going to go to Jubilees, Yovelin, 
chapter eight. Give me one second. We believe eight, and we're gonna start at one. Okay. Give me one second to pull this up. It's a little slow. Jubilees 8, Tefer, Yovel, Yoveline, okay? And of course, we have the precepts in this book of Jubilees, as well as the Strong's numbers connecting to the Old and New Testament and the Apocrypha and missing books. Hallelujah. All right, so this is right after the flood, right after Noah gets off of the ark and he plants a vineyard. He planted more than just grapes. He planted herbs. Let's go. Okay. This is the book of Jubilees, chapter 8, verse 1. In the 29th Yovel, in the first week, in the beginning thereof, Arkfaxad took Arkfaxad to himself. is a descendant of Shem. Okay. All right. So we have Arkfaxad, who's a descendant of Shem from the line of Noah. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, took himself a wife. And her name was Reshua, Reshuya, the daughter of Shushan, the daughter of Elam. And she bare him a son in the third year in this week. And he called his name Canaan. Canaan. Quenan. Quenan, Quenan. Quenan was born. Mm-hmm. Quenan was born. Quenan was born 1,375 years after Adam. Mm-hmm. Okay. Go okay. ahead. Okay, verse two. Possession, but he actually became possessed. Okay. All right, let's let's go for it. Go ahead. Okay, verse two. And the son grew, and his father taught him writing. So he learned he, writing after the flood. Okay. And he went to seek for himself a place where he might get for himself a city. Mm -hmm. And he found a writing which former generations had graven on the rock. So he found spells, magic, witchcraft that was hidden in a cave on stones. This is after the flood. This is how this, this, this evil that is being practiced throughout the world this is how this came back on the earth after the flood. Go ahead. Okay. Start over and he, the top ten of three. Okay. And he found a writing which former generations had graven on the rock, and he read what was thereon, and he and he transcribed it, and he found amongst it even the teachings of the watchers, found witchcraft the of the watchers, witchcraft, and he transcribed it so. He was able to look at the old language from the time of Noah that they were speaking and then transcribe it. Okay. Uh, which cr- sorry for the interruptions. I keep interrupting okay. you. I'm just trying to illustrate. Read it one more time. Okay. And he found a writing which former generations had graven on the rock. And he read what was thereon. And he transcribed it. And he found amongst it even the teachings of the watchers. How do you think these scientists learn everything that they're doing? To put spikes in the protein, horns or thorns within the proteins of people's bloodstream. Where do you think this knowledge comes from? Who's inspiring this? Who's inspiring these scientists? Who's inspiring these doctors? Pharmacia. Sorcery. This comes from the watchers, the generation of vipers. This is what Yehoshua was speaking of. This is what Moses was talking about. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, witchcraft, wherein they gaze at the sun, moon, and stars, and all the signs of the heavens. Mm-hmm. Okay, in verse 4. And he wrote it and did not speak regarding it. For he was afraid to speak to Noah about it, lest he should be angry with him on account of it. Mm. Go ahead. Uh, verse 5. 
And in the 13th Yovel, in the second week, in the first year thereof, he took to himself a wife, and her name was Milka, the daughter of Madai, the son of Yafet. Uh, this is where we get the Medes from. The Medes uh, in Persian. This is where you get the term media. This is why the media is filled with witchcraft, with magic. So media, right. <laughs> Medea, <Yeah. laughs> Medea, like, like, uh, <laughs> the Medes and the Persian Medes means sorceress. Medes is synonymous with sorcery. This is the beginning of sorcery on the earth. So now, when we look at their films and their television programs and their their social media, it's called media because this is how sorcery and magic came back on the earth from this bloodline here. And it's Yes. And they practice work. Yes. And that's where you get the word magic. Magic. That's right. That's where the magi come from, and that's where the word magic comes from. Hallelujah. Came. This is how it came, okay? From this bloodline. This is witchcraft. All right. And then we're gonna go now down to chapter ten. I was about to put you. Chapter 10, this is how demons came on the earth after the flood. This is how the me, the media, this is the media. Quainan was a median, and Quainan means to be possessed. He became possessed by these spirits. How can you being evil speak good things? You generation of vipers. Your media is wicked. You lead through the media hundreds of millions of people to their death. Mm. And you being evil seek to speak good things like you're concerned about people's health and their wellness. Go ahead. Okay, this is the, the Book of Jubilee, chapter 10, verse 1. And in the third week of this Yovel, the unclean Ruchot began to seduce the children of the sons of Noah and to deceive and destroy them. And the sons of Noach came to Noach, their father, and they told him the matter of the Ruchot, which were seducing and blinding and slaying and his son's blinding. children. And blinding. What happened to Jamie Foxx? He was seduced by money, fame, and it made him blind, and then it slays your son's children. Look at that. Look what the media does. The media seduces and blinds the pop, the public. This is from the unclean Rukot, the evil spirits. What is social media filled of? What seduction? The flesh. Look at this woman's body, look at this man's money. Look at this woman's body, look at this man's money. Look at this woman's body. Look at this man's mind. That's what social media does. Mm. Go ahead. Mm. Uh, verse 3. And he prayed before Yehovah his Elohim and said, Elohim of the Ruchot of all flesh who have sown loving kindness unto me. So he got shown loving kindness unto me. And have saved me and my sons from the waters of the flood, and have not caused me to perish as you did the sons of Abaddon. Because of your great mercy unto me and great loving kindness upon my soul, let your mercy be lifted up upon the, my sons and your sons, and let not wicked Rukoth rule over them, lest they should destroy them from the earth. This is, this is a good prayer to read if you are. With unclean spirits, read the prayer of Noah and meditate on it. All right, Amen. meditate on this in Hebrew. If you study in Hebrew, read this in Hebrew to overcome afflictions. The Most High Yah had respect to the prayer of Noah against these unclean spirits. Go ahead. 
Okay, verse 4. But may you bless me and my sons, so that we may be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And you know that your watchers, the fathers of these Rukot, have done in my days. And the Rukot, which are living, bind them and reserve them in the place of judgment. So and let them not... Noah binding and casting unclean spirits into hell before Yehoshua manifested on the earth mm. through this prayer. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, and let them not bring destruction on the sons of your servants, my Elohim, for they are wicked and were created in order to destroy. Mm. Verse 6. And let them not rule over the souls of the living, for you alone can appoint their judgment. And let them not have power over the sons of the righteous from henceforth and forevermore. Verse 8, and Yehovah Elohim commanded us to bind them all, and Mastema, the Ma'ak of evil, Rukot, came and said, Adonai, creator, now, let's... Just like in the book of Job, now you have the, the wicked one coming before the Most High. Mm. Pleading against the righteous, asking to be able to destroy mankind. So now this unclean, this, this devil called Mastima, which means hatred. This is an evil Ruach, like, much like the devil, much like Satan, who is going to plead in the opposite way to have the power to steal, kill, and destroy. Okay. Verse 8. And Yehovah Elohim commanded us to bind them all. And Mastima, the Ma'ak of evil, Ruchot, came and said, Adonai, creator, let some of them remain before me and let them hear my voice and do all that I shall say unto them. For if some of them are not left to me, I shall not be able to execute the dominion of my will on the sons of men. For these are here to corrupt and to destroy and to lead astray before my judgment. For great is the wickedness of the sons of men. So now he's saying because man is evil, they should be punished. Let me do the punishing. Go ahead. Okay, verse 9. This and is he why said, giving tithes is important, family. This is why giving alms and donations is, is, is a good thing for your own benefit. We're going to see the principles of this from the beginning. Go ahead. Okay, verse, verse 9. Verse nine. Mm -hmm. And he said... Let the tenth part of them remain before him, and let nine parts descend into the place of judgment. Yah said, put 90% of these unclean spirits into hell, into Sheol, and allow 10% to remain. Pain. And when we pay our tithes, this is why we're requiring everyone in the body of Kai Yeshua to pay tithes. Alms and donations, a tenth of what you have, even as I do myself. This is why this is required. Because that 10% we're re we, we are required to pay. The most high paid 90% on our behalf, and we are required to pay the other 10%. He paid the cost for our sins. And he only required us to pay 10% of our increase to give back to him, to Yah, for what he's done for us in covering the 90. This is where the principle of tithing comes from. But we've seen the Christian church abuse this. But this is a spiritual principle. And we can't build as a community without this principle. All we'll be able to do is make YouTube videos indefinitely. <laughs> this truth is about more than making videos. At what point do the things that we're teaching and learning as a community come together to create a physical community, something tangible? We cannot build anything tangible without this principle. 
And you should not tithe or donate to people who misuse funds. People who misuse like that, don't tithe to them. But if you see good fruit, you sow into that ministry. To wherever you are being fed, this is a spiritual principle. Okay. Go ahead. You want to say thank you to, I just saw somebody support. Uh, okay, verse 9. Oh, and he oh, said, oh, oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and Yadaya. Yadaya. Yadaya Yeshua. Paro Air. King. Oh, okay. Hallelujah. Y'all bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, we appreciate that. We're not saying a principle that we don't do ourselves. And this is this is a spiritual principle um, to actually build a community. And without this, you'll never see us do anything tangible as a nation. If you look at uh, the Christian church, what's that guy's name? Um, Creflo Dollar. Creflo Dollar, but there's one who's on YouTube who's building up a lot of churches. His name is on the tip of my tongue. Oh, man. Geno Jennings. Mm, yes. Somebody Pardon. told me that Geno Jennings is now able to put up churches all over the place and quickly because his, his congregation, they donate. If we had 100 people say, hey, we're going to give a certain amount of money towards building a building. That building could be can be had. You know how fast, how quickly? Okay. But if the person you tithe into doesn't do what they say they're going to do, like we've had a lot of thieves and robbers in the black uh, YouTube sector who say they're going to raise money for a school or they're going to raise money for this and that, and they didn't do it, then that person should be ostracized and excommunicated. But the people who are trustworthy with what has been entrusted to them, that's where you you give your 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 alms and donations to. This is where the Kenneth Holmes, we want to say thank you and y'all bless you. Justice Bent here, thank you and y'all bless you. Derek Hicks, thank you and y'all bless you. We appreciate that. With this, you will see this body, Kai Yeshua, as we start to set goals for the building of this congregation. Physically, you're going to see the fruit of it. And when you see the fruit of it in your area, and when you see the fruit of it in a centralized location where people will be able to come, and when we actually unveil the goals that we have that we've been planning and working on, we're, we're just getting everything lined up and organized so that when we present it to the body, it's it's, it's foolproof, and you're going to see the, the plan. Oh, yeah. Then we're going to go forth, and we're going to execute that plan by Shem Yehoshua. Okay. We're going to create and build tangibly because the truth is about more than just us being separated in our in our different locations, just watching videos. At some point, we have to come together and, and build a community and dwell together. That's right. With, without this principle... The Temple of Solomon would have never been constructed. The Tabernacle of Moses would have never came to be uh, uh, came to be without the people donating. But they they donated it to righteous people and to trustworthy shepherds, and that's the difference. Okay, if, we, if people if we start taking donations and then we have a new Rolls Royce <laughs> and there's no building. Then you know where you know that that's a, that's a false shepherd. But if you say, okay, now we've donated and we've given, and now we have X amount of acres of land, then you know it's trustworthy. So we want to say thank you to those who are supporting, and this is a principle now that we're moving forward with. All right. Go ahead, Aki. Go ahead and read that. Okay, Let's verse do, nine. Um, Let's do verse nine again. Okay. And he said, let the tenth part of them remain before him and let nine parts descend into the place of judgment. Mm -hmm. 
And one of us, he commanded that we should teach Noah all their medicines. All for the medicines. So Noah was the first herbalist. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm. And he taught all of this information to Shem. As Elder Sohar says, the world says chemistry, but he says it's chemistry. Mm. Hmm. Wow. Chemistry. Yeah. Right. And Shem is from Shemayim, which is heaven. The first herbalist and doctor is Noah. He taught Shem. Shem taught Abraham. Abraham taught Isaac. Isaac taught Jacob. Jacob taught Joseph. Joseph was mm. Imhotep. Joseph taught the world. Mm. Yep. Hallelujah. The, the Egyptians used magic prior to Joseph coming to Egypt. They used divination, which which only breeds more sickness. Mm -hmm. Those who heal with divination, let's say somebody has a, a, a disease, and then they're praying to demons for a cure to this disease. The demons will take that disease, and then they'll give that disease to someone else. And then the person who has quote unquote been healed now has another judgment upon them and a oath that they must perform in order to save their life. So they have to do a blood sacrifice or something evil in order for their life not to be taken. And then that sickness is put on another. That's how that operates in the demonic realm. But the Most High Yah created herbs and he gave the knowledge to Noah. And Noah passed it on. To Shem, Shem passed it to Abraham, Abraham to Isaac, Isaac to Jacob, Jacob to Joseph. Joseph went to Egypt. The world had to come to Egypt to get food during the famine, and they also had to come to Joseph to get healing. Imhotep is Joseph, the first master of physician of the world. But in our family, in the body of Yehoshua, in the truth, was Noah. Read that again, brother. Dang. And one of us, he commanded that we should teach Noah all their medicines, uh, for he knew that they would not walk in uprightness nor strive in righteousness. So uh, sin and the deceit of these devils is what causes sickness and disease. So he knew that mankind would not walk in uprightness, so he created medicine from the earth in order to heal us from the deceptions of the devil. Go ahead. And okay, verse 11. And we did, according to his words, all the worst ones that did wickedness, we bound in the place of judgment. And a tenth part of them we left so that they might be governed before Satan on the earth. So 10%, Verse 12. 10%, 10 of the demons were allowed to roam the earth. So Abraham paid 10% to Melchizedek as a tithe and as a donation. This is us giving alms to the Most High to repay him for the debt of our sins. For that 10% of the demons that were left on the earth. And for allow, the most high allowing 90% to remain bound in Sheol. Then we give 10% of our increase to show gratitude to the most high. This is what it is. And again, we can't build anything tangible without these principles. With these principles, we built Solomon's temple. The mm -hmm. greatest building ever built on the earth. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hallelujah. Hold one second. I'm going to pull it up. 
Let's uh, read some comments real quick. Um, um, Christina, while I pull this up. Right. Um, Marvelous says Egypt was also a principality with the governing old world in a geographic area. Um, this is the original school that is the intro on the beginning of Nas's first debut album, The Magnum, released in 1994. What's the intro? What's that? Uh, let me see. Um, the famous line that Nas spit that put him on the map at the age of 21, I went to hell for snuffing years. Oh, yeah, I remember that. That's right. Brother Kenya says, building our own school system would be nice. Yes, definitely. Okay. Okay. All right. That was it. All right, I'm going to show y'all about Imhotep, okay? The first position, the first worldly position. This is Joseph. Go ahead, I. The ancient Egyptian civil civilization was the first of the recorded great world civilizations. Right. Yeah. Little is known about the prehistoric societies that came before Egypt, but it is assumed that they were steeped in superstition and that, and that their ability to treat disease was primitive at best and possibly non-existent. And that's what we were saying. Before Joseph came, they were using uh, superstition, magic, witchcraft for healing, which only leads to more death. It's a false healing. How can you be evil? What did Yehoshua say? How can you who are evil do good? Okay. You generation of vipers. So this is what he was talking about. All right, so we're gonna go now down to uh, the first position. Okay. Sir William Osler describes Imhotep as the first figure of a physician to stand out clearly from the myths of antiquity. His medical practices deviated from the use of magic and prayer that other Egyptian healers used and were remarkably advanced for the time. He didn't use magic. He had the spirit of the Most High Yah upon him. Mm. Which they want to attribute to magic. This is Joseph, Imhotep. Hotep, Yosef. All right, go ahead. Okay. Although there are no confirmed writings by Imhotep, the famous Edwin Smith papyrus, named after the after the dealer who bought it in 1862, is considered by many to have originally been written by him. The ancient text is the oldest known written manual for surgery of surgery and trauma, and describes 48 cases of wounds, fractures, dislocations, and tumors. Among the treatments described are suturing of wounds, splinting bandaging, managing infections with honey and resins, and the use of raw meat for the purpose of homeostasis. Um, immobilization was advised for lower limb fractures and spinal cord injuries, and it also describes reasonably detailed anatomical and physiological descriptions. This was all by Joseph that he learned from... Um, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who learned from Shem and Noah. And my uncle. Imhotep is thought to have diagnosed and treated over 200 diseases in his lifetime, including tuberculosis, appendicitis, gout, gallstones, and arthritis. He also performed surgery, and he may have also found the first ever school of medicine in Memphis. He created the first school for the world, but the secret knowledge originated from Noah, who got it again from where? From heaven. Shemayim. Okay. The angels came and taught Noah. Yah commanded the angels to teach Noah. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. As well as being the first named physician, Imhotep is also the first named architect and was responsible for the most famous building projects of Dozier's reign, the Great Step Pyramid at Saqqara. Dozier, him, Dozier himself, 
uh, would eventually be buried there after his death and is now better known as the Pyramid of Do Dozier. Well, we see that the Most High spoke about the pyramid being a symbol. Let's get it. Was that Isaiah 8, 19, right? Isaiah 19. Let's get this. Okay, we're going to get the scripture where the Most High speaks on the building of the pyramid in, in Egypt. That these things came from his knowledge and his wisdom and understanding. And they are witnesses that he, he uh, set up. This came through Imhotep, through Joseph. All right. Let's read some comments real quick. Um, Dorothy Temple shared that um, at the beginning of the death from the snake bite or the snake venom, they refused to let family do an autopsy. Mm. Cheryl Williams said that nurse, a nurse in a dementia unit said she noticed that patients who get um, the condition display levels of violence that have not been seen before. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, those who have the spike protein in their system, it emits a, a, a radiation frequency that Bluetooth can pick up. So Bluetooth, you can, you can, you can scan somebody with your iPhone uh, who has got the snake bite mm -hmm. and it'll register as a, a, you know, like when you do a Bluetooth search mm -hmm. for devices on your, on your, uh, phone, they have a, they have a code number. When someone has that snake bite, that person shows up on the Bluetooth search. That's crazy. And, uh, Tona will buy, um, Yako C for your super cat donation. Thank you. And y'all bless you, brother. What we have here on the screen, this is the oldest known um, bus of Imhotep, who is Joseph. If you notice, he has no facial hair. Right. What happened when Joseph was pulled out of prison? In the scripture, it says that they had to shave him before he was able to go before Pharaoh. And they would destroy the noses and the lips of the bus because you would be able to clearly see that in Hotep is black. So they defaced a lot of the images of our people throughout history. But the Most High said, Everything done in the dark shall be brought to the light in the last days. Hallelujah. So now let's get the scripture. Isaiah 19, 19. Speak God. Hallelujah. All right, yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to leave because we're in still in the book of Jubilees. What I'm going to do is pull it up here. Um, we're going to go to the book of Isaiah, okay? This is, this is where the Most High speaks on the pyramids. Isaiah 19. And the message to Egypt, Misraim, the burden of Egypt. Behold, Yehoah rideth upon a swift cloud and shall come into Misraim, and the idols of Misraim shall be moved at his presence, and the heart of Misraim shall melt in the midst of it. Let's go to verse 19. Let's start actually. Isaiah 19 and 18. Okay. And that day shall five cities in the land of Mithraim speak the language of Canaan and swear to Jehovah of hosts, one shall be called the city of destruction. The language of Canaan is what? Canaan, yes. Mm -hmm. what's, the, what's the land of Canaan? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. The land of Canaan is what? Israel. 
The language of Canaan is what? Ibrit. Ibrit. It's going to come a day when descendants of Egypt will serve the Most High Yah. That's what it's saying. Go ahead. Cain. Verse 19. The Most High Yah in the last days. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Cain. Verse 19. And that day shall there be an altar to Yehoah in the midst of the land of Mitzrayim and a pillar at the border thereof to Yehoah. Mm. And that day there shall be an altar to Yehoah in the midst of the land of Egypt. These are the pyramids. Mm. It's a pillar. The Great Pyramid. There's no Egyptian mummies in the Great Pyramid. It's empty. It's, it's left as an altar. There's no mummies in the Great Pyramid. In that day, there shall be an altar to Yehoah in the midst of the land of Mitzrayim. Go ahead. And a pillar at the border thereof to Yehoah. Dang. Verse 20. Hold on one second. Okay. A monument, Matzeba. That's how you say pillar, Matzeba. Matzeba. Okay. Hold on. A pillar or a monument. Okay. All right. A memorial stone. Mm. By analogy, even an idol. Some people worship the pyramids as an idol. A standing image. Something stationed. The pyramids can't be moved. Okay. We got some people worshiping these things. It's not for worship. It's just a monument. It's a memorial. This is called the Great Pyramid. Yes, yeah, the biggest one there. It's the only one that is built like that. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna pull that up right now, Toda. The only one that's built like stones and there's nothing there. Yeah. The stones power. Or stone is empty. Okay. There are 144,000 stones in the Great Pyramid. At the bottom of the base. Yeah. At the at the base of the pyramid. 144,000 stones at the base of the Great Pyramid in Egypt. We're going to show you. 144,000. Hit thumbs up if this video is edifying, y'all. Share this video. All right. The 144,000 casing stones of the Great Pyramid at Giza. Mm -hmm. 144,000. What's the monument to the Most High Yah in the midst of Egypt? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. When originally constructed in ancient times, the surface of the Great Pyramid of Giza was covered in highly polished Tura limestone blocks, carefully interlocked. The blocks gave a uniform smooth surface to all four sides, the whole structure is shining brilliant, brilliant white in the light of the reflecting sun. Hold on one Net second. Hold on one second. We're going to type in Paleo Hebrew alphabet. We're going to do images. I'm trying to uh, okay here we go oh man yeah every time I put the mouse over it it's um let me see if I can find another image of that 
Uh, give me one second. This is even better. So. Oh man, this one too. It's okay. Give me one second. Let me. Um, read a comment. Lance White said, just imagine what the RFID microfit would do to people who take it. Mm. Dorothy Tupper says, funny, there will only be 144,000 women. It's going to be 144,000 rules over the earth. Yeah. The virgin, the yeah. pure set apart for the most high. They're at the foundation. Hallelujah. Okay. All right. Um, he was a teacher. He asked to pray for his father. Well, yeah, father. Um, at, the end, at the end of the study, we can take some prayers for the saints. Okay. All right. We're looking at ancient Hebrew, right? We got Aleph, okay, which is here, Aleph, Bait, Bait, Gimel, Dalit, okay, Dalit means the door, Dalit is a pyramid, okay, it's a triangle in, in ancient Hebrew, it means to move, to hang, or an entrance. So people have taken the, the, as we were reading about the unclean spirits that overtook the earth, they started to teach wickedness on the earth. They took what the most high meant for good and then they turned it evil. And they made idols, as we just read, they made idols out of the monuments and out of the symbols of our Hebrew heritage. They took the herbs which the most high made for healing and through knowledge of the demons, they made drugs. But drugs derive from herbs. So you take the combination of the good things that the most high created and then you and you put it in, in a in a bad uh mix and then it becomes a drug, something used for evil. Everything y'all made is good, but not everything is compatible with one another. So when you take things that are not compatible and then you mix it, it can become evil. But the intent originally was for good. And so the unclean spirits. The fallen angels, they taught mankind these evil things. And they took the herbs and they made drugs out of them. They took this door, this Dalet, the fourth letter. Of course, with 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 door, let's just write it. Let me write it here. You got Yah's name, Yod, Hey, Wow, Hey. Or Yod, Hey, Wow. Hey, which is the Most High's name, Yehoah. Hallelujah. So if we take Yehoah's name and we take this Dalit and we put it right here, then we get Yehuda. Okay, the same four letters, yod hey, wow hey, yod hey, wow, dalit hey. This is we're the door to the breath of life. Elder said, "This is how you say Judah." Yehuda. Right, we're the door, the gateway to the Most High Yah. So that's what the the, the monument represents. Only one is prophesied to be there. One, one pillar. The rest of them are idols. And we're not to worship any of them. So you got committed commissions or uh, Egyptologists worshiping these things. And then they're calling on demonic spirits on the monument that belongs to the Most High Yah. 
Okay, so Yehuda, with that door, we get the father's name, Yehoah, with that door, that pyramid, or as we say earlier, the horn, cutting. It's like a horn or even like a spike, so to speak, sticking out of the ground. Pattern. All right. Pyramid. Let's go to the book of, um, we're going to go to the book of Maccabees. Give me one second. Go to First Maccabees, First Maccabees thirteen. Hit the like or the thumbs up, or I'm gonna have to play a commercial. Okay. Uh, okay, family. Y'all heard that. Okay, First Maccabees. Let's get those thumbs up. Yeah. First Maccabees 13. First Maccabees 13, let's start at verse 25. I'm going to bed. First Maccabees chapter 13, verse 25. Then sent Shimon and took the bones of Jehonathan, Yo his brother, and buried them in Modin. This is Simon this Maccabee. Simon Maccabee, who takes over leadership from Judah Maccabee. He's now getting ready to bury his family, okay, who died fighting for Yah and for Israel. So Shimon, this is who we're talking about, Shimon and Yohanatan Maccabee. Okay. Go ahead. Um, then sent Shimon and took the bones of Yohanatan, his brother, and buried them in Modin, the city of his fathers. And all Yisrael made a great lamentation for him and bewailed him many days. Shimon also built a monument upon the sepulcher of his father, and his brethren, and raised it aloft to the to the site, with hewn stone behind and before. Moreover, he set up seven pyramids, one against another, for his father and his mother and his four brethren. Okay, here we go. Sleeker. Mm -hmm. Okay, verse twenty-nine. And in these he made cunning devices about the which he set great pillars. And upon the pillars he made all their armor for a perpetual memory. And by the armor ships carved that they might be seen of all that sail on the sea. Verse 30. This is the sepulcher which he made at Modin. And it stands yet unto this day. All right. So we see with scripture okay we're confirming with scripture read some comments please okay. anthony eden says don't forget they are putting it in the fruit and vegetables as well mm. Yes, family. Let's get let's get those thumbs up. Uh, we got two thirty in the chat. We got one hundred fifty likes. Let's get those numbers up. We know this is valuable and important information for everybody. So let's get those thumbs up so we can get the word out. Just close the chat, click that thumbs up, and come right back. Right. 
and y'all hit thumbs up, and I'll maybe play a commercial at the end. <laughs> you know, some of these people are really upset that the truth is coming out. They're really upset. All right. So now let's go back. We were in Isaiah 19, right? So now we're showing you about the monuments for pyramid, right? So let's go back now. We're going to show you two and three witnesses. The Egyptians are idolaters who worship wood and stone. Pyramids are made of stone, right? We're not to worship wood and stone. But have an understanding of where these things come from. They come from Joseph, Imhotep. Let's go back to Isaiah 19 and 19. We got to know our history because uh, McGraw Hill, when they talk about M Hotep, they're going to tell us something mm -hmm. totally different. And, and, and he's going to have blue eyes and blonde hair, right? Mm -hmm. and <laughs> All right, go ahead. And no lips. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Isaiah 19, verse 19. In that day shall there be an altar to Yahoah in the midst of the land of Mitzrayim, and a pillar at the border theref thereof to Yehoah. Verse 20, And it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto Yehoah of hosts in the land of Mitzrayim. For they shall cry unto Yehoah because of the oppressors, and he shall send them a savior and a great one, and he shall deliver them. It shall be for a sign and a witness unto Yehoah of hosts in the land of Mitzrayim. He promised that part of the land to Abraham That's along the river Nile. Right? Mm -hmm. From the river Nile to the Tigris, Euphrates River. He promised that to Abraham and it was put there as a witness that he would give that land to us too. Everywhere where the sole of our foot tread, he said he would give to the children of Israel. Okay. This is why in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 23, it says, thou shalt not a poor or, or an Egyptian. Why? Because you're strangers in their land. That's why the most I said not to hate these two nations specifically. All right, so we get getting scripture. But they became idolaters and worshiped these things that Enhotep or Yosef built. All right, let's go through it. Joseph was Enhotep of Egypt. He built the first pyramid of Egypt at Saqqara and stored grain in underground silos there. This is a picture of the underground silo. You can see video on this on YouTube. These are like really deep silos in the ground where the grain was stored. I think there's seven huge of them. Yeah. yeah. And they have stairs that go all the way down. I mean, these things are deep. That's pretty smart. Dry, cool. Statue of Endo Imhotep holding a papyrus scroll in his lap. Read in depth the research on Joseph Egypt and evidence showing the grain storage next to the first pyramid. So these grain silos are next to the Great Pyramid. Evidence that this was Joseph's work that he built with the wisdom that Yah gave him from heaven. Go ahead. Okay. National Geographic's January 1995 describes a man called Imhotep who saved his country from a famine. Right. <laughs> Perhaps most confident was Imhotep, the architect who probably conceived of building Do Dozier's pharaoh's tomb completely from stone. Known as a sculptor, a priest, and a healer, Imhotep is considered the preeminent genius of the Old Kingdom. He assembled one workforce to quarry limestone to ship the crude blocks by boat to Saqqara and yet another to haul the stones to the site where master carvers shaped each block and put it in place. 
uh, on a granite boulder above the Nile's first cataract, the formidable rapids at Aswan, a sculptor who lived much later, thus the facts are not totally accurate, chiseled out a, in hieroglyphs uh, the story of Imhotep had even saved oh, Slika, the story of how Imhotep had even saved his country from a famine. So in the hieroglyphs, the hieroglyphs gives testimony that the Bible, that the scripture is real. The hieroglyphs witness and testify that the word of Yah is truth. So how can Egyptologists claim to reverence Imhotep when Imhotep served the Most High Yah? Hallelujah. Okay, how we are. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, in, nine, in 1890, Charles Wilbur discovered this boulder on the island of Sahal at the Nile, telling a story of Imhotep. The annual Nile flood, which, in, uh, which inundated surrounding fields every autumn before farmers sowed their seed, failed seven years in a row. Doja asked Imhotep where the source of the river lay. The pharaoh intended to travel there to interrogate the river gods and beg them to show mercy on his people. But Imhotep, repl but Imhotep replied that sacred uh, Elohim uh, books had, had given him the answer. The, flood, the floods returned and the famine was over. In about 12,000 B.C., Fully 14,000 years after his death, Imhotep, the genius architect of Doja's reign, was defiled at, by the Egyptians who built... That means that they made him a god. So 1,400 years after Joseph's death, the Egyptians started to worship him. Mm -hmm. This is why mm -hmm. Joseph didn't want his bones left in Egypt by any means. He told his descendants, make sure you take my bones out of this land because he knew they would worship him. But it was uh, all of the patriarchs were allowed to go to the, to the field of Hebron, the cave of uh, Machpelah in Hebron to be buried when they died. But the Egyptians refused to let Joseph's bones go because they knew that when Joseph's body left out of there, Egypt would be destroyed. And so it was Moses who was allowed to bring forth the bones of Joseph and Egypt was destroyed at the going forth of Joseph's body. As oh, it was yeah. And I want to say this really quickly. The dream that Pharaoh had could be broken down two different ways. One from the spirit. They're both spiritual. Pharaoh had a dream. Tell me the dream about the, the, the seven cattle. There were seven cattle grazing in the field. Um, I think there were seven other cattle that appeared that were like really uh, bare. So, right. you So you had seven uh, famished thin cows, right? And they devoured the seven fat cows. And Joseph interpreted this how? That in seven, there'll be seven years of uh, plenty, just like the fat cows, and seven years of plenty. There will be seven years of plenty, and then they would be followed by seven years of famine and drought. So the thin cows swallowed up the fat cows. But Pharaoh was concerned about this, but Joseph told them how to get out of this to store up the grain during the years of plenty so that during the years of famine, they could eat. And then through this wisdom that Yah gave him, they would also be able to sell food to the world. And through the selling of food to the whole world, they became a superpower. And then because Joseph had knowledge of the herbs, they were also able to heal people. So Egypt became extremely great. But Pharaoh and the Magi, the media, they saw it another way as well. That the seven thin cows would devour 
the seven fat cows. The seven thin cows down the line during the time of Moses pointed to the children of Israel who was afflicted, who would devour and destroy Egypt. But that Pharaoh was happen, happy because it didn't happen during his time. He had Joseph there to deliver and save. That would be for his descendants to deal with at a latter time. But the thin cows would be the children of Israel afflicted, turned into slaves in the press, and they would destroy the fat cows. And that's what's going to happen here in the United States of America. The thin cows or the oppressed people is going to devour the fat cows, the rich and the wealthy, by the power of the Most High Yah. Hallelujah. Thank you. All right. Let's go back to this. About 1200 BC. Cain. And about 1200 BC, fully 1400 years after his death, Amotep, the genius architect of Dozer's reign, was de deified by the Egyptians who built cult temples to honor him. Mm -hmm. this, is why, this is why Satan fought, fought over Moses' body. In the book of Jude, you see this. In the ascension of Moses, I think you see it as well. Wow. In the movie, The Mummy. They made Imhotep um, an Edomite, and, and he was doing witchcraft and magic. He was wicked. He was an evil. He was like the, the villain of the film. Right. They just can't take But then they mad at Cleopatra. Yeah. They won't destroy our images. Go ahead, Aki. Toda. It's rather amazing how historians and archaeologists have managed to explain away evidence which validates the biblical account. Myths and legends derived from actual events of biblical times are found all over the world, such as the multitude of flood stories. But to the unbeliever, these only prove that the Bible was influenced by these myths. The fact that, uh, excuse me, the fact is that these myths are satanic corruptions of the truth designed by Satan to convince man that his own cleverness, he is smarter than God, and ultimately this kind of thinking leads to a person to deny entirely the existence of Elohim and the truth of the Bible. Yet, no one seems to think it strange that even uh, that every known civilization has had some type of religious system. If there is no God, where did this idea of religion and gods come from? It came from the original truths known by the original post-flood family of Noah. The facts which have been found valid have been found validate the biblical account, not the myths and legends, but there will always be those who simply will not see. Uh, some of these great evidences relate to the story of Yosef in ancient Egypt. Inscriptions on the monument uh, to Hor what is that? Horemheb, mm -hmm. a pharaoh several years after the Exodus, provide evidence of a story of the pharaoh in Yosef's day, extending an invitation to ya Yaakov's family to come live in Egypt. It tells of a community of shepherds from the north asking Edith to allow them to pasture their cattle as was the custom of the father of their fathers from which from the beginning. There is also a picture in the tomb of Tehuti Hetep in Bereshe, which has a picture of a herd of Syrian cattle entering Egypt with the inscription. Once you trod the Syrian sands, now here in Egypt, you shall feed in green pastures. Light from the ancient past, Jack Fing Fingen, Finnegan. Uh, the evidence which parallel the story of Yosef 
are the focus of this newsletter, but first we must set the stage. According to our chronology, chronology, ah, chronology taken from the biblical record, the flood occurred about 2348 BC. Abraham left Haran in about 1921 BC, about 427 years later. Soon after this, we don't know exactly how soon, he and Sarah went to Egypt because of a famine in Canaan. The biblical account is extremely short on the subject of Abraham's visit to Egypt. But we do learn that Abraham misled the Pharaoh about who Sarah was. He, as he told Pharaoh, she was his sister. This was partially true since she was his half-sister, but she was always his, also his wife. The Pharaoh took her to his palace since she was so beautiful. The king paid Abraham well for Sarah, but Elohim intervened, causing some types of plagues to fall upon Pharaoh. When the Pharaoh figured out the cause of these inflictions, he called Abraham to account, asking him why he lied to him about Sarah. He then offered his men to escort Abraham and his entourage out of Egypt. Egypt at this time was already a rich nation, for it was at this time that Abraham became rich in cattle, gold, and silver, given to him as payment for Sarah. And there is good evidence that it was at this time that the regulation prohibiting the Egyptians from eating, drinking, or fraternizing with foreign shepherds was instituted. <laughs> Uh, Yosef relates that Abraham was responsible for bringing the knowledge during the early part of the first dynasty, about 1950 BC. Oh, right. So we were talking about this before, how Abraham taught Pharaoh in Egypt the Maserot, and they tried to make or duplicate the Maserot by creating sphinxes, which shows the head of a virgin and the body of a lion which is Yehoshua being born of the Virgin Mary and becoming the conquering lion of Judah. These secrets they learned from Abraham, as well as the constellations. Go ahead. It would be about 200 years later when Yosef would be elevated to, the, to his high position in Mitzrayim, second only to the, to the Pharaoh. During this time of the third dynasty, there appears on the scene a most incredible individual in the ancient records, a man called Imhotep. For many years, Egyptologists have doubted that Imhotep had been a real person. They found it rather difficult to believe the various accomplishments cre credited to him in the accounts written over a thousand years after he was supposed to have lived. At times, Imhotep had been t uh, termed the Leonardo da Vinci of ancient Egypt, but they in fact, he was. In. They got to insert this. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. But in okay. fact, he was he was more than that. Da Vinci gained the reputation of a genius. Imhotep was eventually elevated to the status of a god. Right. Mm -hmm. When Oh wait. Oh, excuse me. In Egypt's long list of gods, very few were ever actually living among them, but Amhotep did. Manetho wrote that during this Dozier of the Third Dynasty uh, reign lived uh, Amalthus, Amalthus, or Amhotep, who, because of his medical skill, has a reputation as uh, Asclepius. Claim, Cain told us, as Cle Clepheus, the Greek god of medicine, among the Egyptians and who was the inventor of the art of building with hewn stone. It was this statement that caused the specialists to doubt the existence of a real man named Imhotep. But in 1926, the question was settled once and for all. Imhotep was a real man. When excavations were carried out at the Step Pyramid at Saqqara, frag fragments of the statue of Pharaoh Dozier were found. The base was inscribed with the names of Dozier and of Imhotep, council, Chancellor of the King of Lower Egypt, Chief under the King, Administrator of the Great Palace, uh, Hereditary Lord, High Priest of Heliopolis, Imhotep the Builder, the Sculptor, the Maker of Stone Vases. Feast. In the third row to the left, and the name of Dozer. In the third row to the left. Go ahead. 
Okay. Oh, so good. Uh, this inscription was found on the base of the uh, sculpture of Dozier, thus indicating Imhotep was a real man as opposed to a god. Does this fit what we know of Yosef? The Bible is quite clear on this high rank under the Pharaoh. Thou shalt be over my house according unto your word, shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. And he made him to ride in the second chariot, which he had, and they cried before him, bow the knee. And he made him rule, ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto, unto Yosef, I am Pharaoh, and without you shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. All right. So this is quite a lengthy thing, but, you know, we just wanted to show you that Enhotep is Yosef. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the seven year famine, right? Right. So, all, all of this is documented. So, we're just trying to show y'all to know your history, okay? That's my uncle. <laughs> Hallelujah. Same. And he stepped out of that famine. Good. That's why we call it chemistry. Yeah, chemistry. <laughs> All right. The book of Jubilees. Chapter 10, verse 12. Okay. And we told Noah all the remedies of their diseases by reason of their seductions so that he might heal them with herbs of the earth. Right, so the diseases come from the seductions of the adversary. So the fact that that so-called disease, where is it at? Uh, by reason of their seductions, right? They seduce the whole earth into getting this snake venom. This is a work of Mastema or the devil, the one who hates mankind. But Yah created the herbs of the earth to heal us, and this is how Enhotep got that knowledge. So again, again, it came from Noah. Noah was the first chief herbalist. And he inscribed these things in the book, passed it to, down to Shem. Shem passed it to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jacob passed it to Joseph, who was known as Enhotep. Go ahead. Up. Okay, verse 13. And Noah wrote everything we taught him in a book as concerning every kind of medicine. And the evil were with were withheld from per persecuting the sons of Noah. So through the word of the Most High Yah, the prayer of Noah, and the herbs that Moses wrote in the book, the people were healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is it frozen? Is it frozen? So good. Can you can you hear me, sis? Shalom, family. Um, Jadai's got some technical difficulties, so you just bear with us. Um, we just do also want to remind you 
that to visit HebrewIsraelScriptures.com or um, any of your biblical resources that you may not have already, including those that are in Hebrew. We have um, the Testament of Yahshua. We have the Book of Jubilees. And we have the Book and Secrets of Enoch that are all in Hebrew and in English. So if you are working on learning the language, please make sure that you stop by and pick up those resources. Stay tuned. We are planning for the start of the next series of Hebrew classes. So make sure you um, keep a look out on the website, HebrewIsLifeScriptures.com. There is a section that says Hebrew classes. When registration goes live, that is when we will register. Um, we are aiming for, towards the end of June, um, to get those started. Additionally, those of you all, if you are in the Houston, Texas area and would like to join us for fellowship, please send us an email at kayashua at gmail.com so that you can receive that information as well. Uh, we look forward to those who will be able to participate. We are very excited about making this trip. This will be my, I'm gonna say really first time in Houston. Uh, been there once, but just stayed in downtown for a hotel, so uh, for a conference. So um, really looking forward to being there with people who actually live there and, and fellowship. Um, we thank you to everybody that's been supporting, that gave Super Chats, that gave Cash App, that did Zelle. We uh, love you, family. Really appreciate it. The continued support is needed so that we can make these trips uh, as well, so that we can um, travel and fellowship and spread Kaya Shua. And so, again, family, we are just so grateful. We thank you for your patience. We know that this word must be phenomenal because the most, because the enemy has interrupted. Like, we have not had the computer to totally freeze up um, like it just happened. So, uh, we know how important this is. Make sure you have thumbs up the video as well for everyone that is still listening. Please thumbs up the video, share the video. Um, if you if you share it, please tag us. Um, we are on. Uh, we have Kaya Stewart on Facebook, as well as Jadaya is on Facebook. I am on Facebook. Um, don't forget, we also have Kaya Shua East with uh, Maurice Sadiq Malave and his wife Anna, who also has moved on faith with the educational materials. We are also on Instagram. We have Kaya Shua on Instagram. He's coming back. Hallelujah. Shalom. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. You were saying? I got to mute for whatever. Okay. Uh, we also have Kaya Shua on Instagram as well as Jadaya is on Instagram. I am on Instagram. And Jadaya and myself, we are also on TikTok. So if you don't get those YouTube notifications, family, make sure. You follow us on Facebook and on Instagram. We try to always post there when we're going to be going live but because we know that YouTube does not always send out those notifications. And he is just I'm, about yeah, ready. I'm still setting up. You still setting up? Okay. Um, and let me see. What else? We got Tyson. And we got Texas. We got Yeah, Jacob, you know, we've been talking about yourself. 
That was on my mind. Yes, Jacob in this for a while. That's like Joseph was married to Oxman. Um, those are also available on the website that you can add for your home decor. So we are just really excited at everything that most is allowing us to do and to bring forth for the nation. Um, and again, if you have questions, please feel free to email us at kayashua at gmail.com. Right, it looks like we're coming back slowly. Yeah, you were telling the people about these, um, these pictures, huh? Go ahead, explain it to them. All right, so there they are. We have the Archangel Mikael, Baby Yehoshua, Father Abraham, um, Jacob and his wife, and family. These, these, they're just so phenomenal. Those of you all that were with us on our Passover and our, and our um, lives then, you had a chance to see mm -hmm. those up. Um, we have three different sizes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so um, you have that opportunity to add these. We have all of these are taken from the Enoch calendar. So um, if you haven't got your Enoch calendar, make sure you put an order in for your Enoch calendar as well. And this is just the first set. We will have all of the images in the Enoch calendar available soon. This is just the first one. So if you see a picture that's in the calendar that's not here yet, it is coming. Your host was King of Kings, right? Yes. And these in three different houses. So please support the work. You see that we're doing our best to restore the image of the Messiah and of our people, right? Yes. Hallelujah. Like, can you imagine now, you know, having these for those you have children, grandchildren, so that they can see that the images and the people of the book, oh, that's that's week. The people of the book right. look like them. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So yes, family, you know, you got these available. Um, take that time to add that decor to your home. Hallelujah. Okay. Is Brother Rocky with? Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, okay. Shalom, Rocky. I'm back. Okay, okay. All right. Okay. So um, we're going to do uh, Jubilees 10 and start at verse 12, right? That's where I think. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, and, no, and we told Noah all the remedies of their diseases by reason of their seductions, so that he might heal them with herbs of the earth. And Noah wrote everything we taught him in a book as concerning every kind of medicine and the evil ruchot were with were withheld from persecuting the sons of Noah. Verse fourteen, and he gave all the books that he had written to Shem, his eldest son, for he loved him exceedingly above all his sons. And Noah slept with his fathers and was buried on Mount Lubar in the land of Ararat. Hallelujah! 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 And, so hallelujah! Noah was the first master physician there, right? And he gave it to Shem. And then we learn later that Abraham went to live with Noah and Shem when Nimrod was hunting him for his life. So Abraham was able to learn all of these things. So God. That's right. That's right. Noah and Shem lived. Noah lived 950 years. Shem, I think, 600 and something yeah, years. Yeah, so... Yeah, by the time Abraham came around, he they were still alive and well. <laughs> yeah, so praise God. Oh, man. Um, man, is there anything else we really need to bring out? I mean, we could talk more on the, on the same thing, but, you know. Um, Don't let them in hope that the hotel brothers see this, uh, Moray. Yeah, I hope the hotel brothers do see this, because this is important for them. Okay. And... You know, and I, I know that there were some people that was really happy. Uh, you know, when when the when the video go down, every time you know our our streams get attacked, they rejoice. 
you know, they always got a, a new song to sing. And, you know, Telegram channel. Man channel, my ex is a blue and check Du meinst, du bist gerne nicht schlafen auf Hille Ich war das hier drei, danach soll man schwere Peckel Du meinst, du bist eine schöne Oh, da ist ein gegetter Beckel So, ja, der ist ich Soll die Suppen mal gieten, morgen ist sie frei Gieten, morgen ist sie frei Yeah, a, a praise break <laughs> for the people of the book. <laughs> oh man, did y'all enjoy the study today? Hey. Oh, praise hey. to the most. <laughs> they said, sing it. <laughs> Oh man. Yeah, so whoever that was that actor said there is a commercial break. Here we go. Somebody wanted a commercial break? Yes. Yeah. Okay, we'll just have um, one more uh, one more <laughs> song that was inspired by the Book of Lamentations. All right, this is inspired by Lamentations. Lamentations means to cry out, right? <laughs> Lamentations means to cry out. That is not his hair. Let's 
Salti tu ma gita mo si fri Che mo si fri Brothers and sisters, I hope y'all enjoyed this Shabbat study. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> and with a prayer. Blessed be thy name, Most High Yah. We thank you in your holy name for bringing forth a word, even to glorify you and to edify and teach your people Israel. We thank you, Heavenly Father Yah, for you have written a book and handed it down from the hand of your angels to our great ancestor Noah. Even the herbs, Most High Yah, the herbs that give health and restore vitality in life. And all this was made possible by your word. So by your word are we healed. By the herbs are we healed. For you created the leaves of the trees for the healing of the nations, even as you said in the book of Revelation. And we pray, Heavenly Father, Yah, that you would heal us in these last days from the venom of the serpent, from the venom of the viper, Most High, from the den of vipers, Most High, who come and have poisoned the earth through their wine and through their false doctrine, through their witchcraft, through their media. And you brought all this out. And they even showing through the hands of their celebrities and their rich and their famous that there is no escape, O Most High Yah, from the judgments of Babylon. It is only through your word and only through the healing of the earth that, Father, we can be saved. It's only by the blood of the Lamb that we can be saved, O Heavenly Father. So we thank you for all healing comes forth through thy son, Yehoshua HaMashiach. And we thank you, Father, for inspiring the study and for giving history and prophecy and, 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 and research and archaeology, teaching the people of the language, teaching the people of even of the pyramids and the great monument that you have set up as a, a, a reminder to even the land of Egypt and the world that you are the true and living Elohim. Even that you have built and erected through thy servant, Yosef, who the world calls Inhotep. For even as the world has called you, Jesus Christ, they have taken and changed the names of, you, of your name and the names of our ancestors and even the name of, of us as a people. But in the last days, you are restoring all things and restoring all truth. For the Ruach HaKodesh is the spirit of truth, and we thank you for it. Please be with us and bless us in this new week ahead. Heal us of our afflictions and infirmities. Cast out unclean spirits. Cast them into hell. Set the people free. Break the chains of the adversary. Break the chains of the heathen. Break the chains of the oppressor of our own people. And Father, uh, and give us liberty. We thank you for all things. And in your son, Yehoshua's name, we pray. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, family, again, we thank you so much for joining us. We pray that this has been a blessing. To you, please remember to um, like the video, thumbs up the video, share the video uh, so that this word can get out. Please remember your continued support to Kayashua, dollar sign Kayashua for Cash App, Kayashua at gmail.com for jail, and of course on our website, Kayashua.com, type an offering and select the yellow donate button. Visit eatwiththeglasscriptures.com for all of your biblical resources, as well as the beautiful canvas print Hallelujah. that you can add to your home. Make sure you follow us on all our social media platforms. Make sure if you have not subscribed to Kaya Shua East, that you go on YouTube, subscribe to Kaya Shua East. They went up with their first uh, tour. Yes, yes, today. yes, yes, Make yes. Make sure yes. you go check that out yes. with um, Maury Shadid. Hallelujah. Brother, um, I dare you. Thank you. And his um, uh, Sadiq's wife, Anna. Um, so we just are really grateful at the growth of the ministry. Praise y'all. So make sure you go check that out as well. Thank y'all for joining us. We pray that the Most High blesses you in the new week ahead. And thank you for sharing this time with us. We greatly appreciate it. To all who supported the ministry uh, financially and donations, we greatly uh, appreciate that. Look for us in Texas, y'all will, next week. Um, next Shabbat in Houston and the following Shabbat after that in Dallas. Yeah. We'll be gathering and we are working diligently to build this body and to have a place of gathering for the saints um, that's tangible. 
okay? We want to make this a tangible thing that can benefit the whole nation and the body of Kai Yeshua through the grace of the Most High God. So y'all bless you and be with you, and we hope to see you next time. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom.